All right, hello everybody. Um, I'm gonna start going through um, some of the processes that are gonna happen within cells. So last class, we really focused on what you could do if you created a, a little compartment for a cell to be, or um, a, a membrane around uh, containing. Um, and now we're gonna talk about uh, creating energy for what's inside of there. So um, the cell's not gonna be able to do anything um, unless it has energy. So we've got our cell membrane that we talked about last class. Now we're going to put some things in there um, for creating sugar and for breaking sugar down and to make energy. Um, and then, so that would be photosynthesis and respiration. A third process is called fermentation. And that's what happens um, in a single-celled living thing or in a multi-celled living thing when there's no access to oxygen. So if you can't have oxygen, um, if you don't have any present, you still need to be able to get energy. Um, so there's a third process for that. Okay. So here we go with photosynthesis. So there's a lot of stuff on this slide, so just go through it slowly. Um, <clears throat> so it's the process that producers do to make sugar. So producer was our word for any organism that can make its own food. They're a producer, um, not the person that comes up with money to finance a film producer. Um, this is done in the chloroplast. So that's the little green structure in the leaf. Um, that's what the, makes the leaf look green. And we're going to make it really simple. What does it use and what does it make? So each one of these processes, um, that's kind of the big takeaway for each slide is what does it use and what does it make? So Chloroplast uses sunlight, CO2, and water. So there's three things, um, and it's able to make sugar, and it also makes oxygen. So the sugar is something that it wants to keep around. The oxygen is something it doesn't need. It's a waste product, and it's released into the air. Um, and at the bottom, I've written this out. So we haven't talked a lot about different atoms, but if I write a C, it's carbon, O is oxygen, H is hydrogen. So there's three molecules used in the process of photosynthesis, and you're gonna see those again in respiration. Um, and I've balanced this equation, and um, again, I'm just gonna go over this kind of basically, and if you kind of get it now, that's good. We'll go over it in more detail later. If I put a six in front of here, it's like a multiplier, so six, multiplied by this one C um, would make six carbons, six multiplied. Now, if I put this small number here, this tells how many oxygen are in this molecule. So there's two oxygen. So I multiply six by two and I get 12. Here we have six times two for 12, six times this one is six oxygens. I'm just going to go through that basic part, um, and we'll cover that in more detail later. Um, but this would be the full balanced equation for photosynthesis. In the center here, over our reaction, we have light and chlorophyll. So these are just reactants, or I'm, I'm sorry, these are just things reacting in the equation. Um, they're not molecules used, so we don't write them on the left or right. Um, next up, we've got cellular respiration. So Cellular respiration happens in the mitochondria. That's the one that looks like a little jelly bean and it's got folded membranes. Um, the process takes sugar and makes cellular energy. So it, what's, it's what makes you go right now. So what makes you be able to think and move around um, is each one of your cells releasing energy um, so that you can do the processes for life. Um, so again, it happens in the mitochondria. And we're going to go back to that simple basic thing. What does it use? It uses sugar and oxygen. I don't. I didn't write the subscript here, which would be the small two below, just because I got lazy. Sorry about that. Um, and what do you make? Um, so you make energy, CO2, and water. Energy you need. Um, that's what you're going to use to power your cells. CO2 in the water you don't need uh, after this. So even though you, I mean, you do need water in your body, but uh, it's a byproduct, a waste product of this reaction. So when I go, when I breathe out, I breathe out CO2 from 
millions of cells in my body that are releasing um, CO2 in reactions. So um, that would eventually get transported to my lungs and then I breathe it out, release that CO2. Um, the water um, gets released as well. And um, that's the balanced equation for that. So the big thing your body needs there is the energy. Now let's look. Um, oh, there's one more thing here I didn't talk about. It's enzymes. So enzymes are just, um, they're things at this point, all you need to know is they're just things that help reactions happen. Um, so it makes it easier for a reaction to happen within a cell. They're kind of like little helpers. And then the very last way, so this is the third process, fermentation is another way to get energy um, from sugar. Um, and uh, this happens when there's no oxygen present. So there's a lot of reasons why that would be useful. Um, and I'll talk about them at the end of the slide. But this is going to be happening in the cytoplasm of the cell. So uh, the reactions are going to happen outside of the mitochondria. They're going to use sugar again, um, and then there's two different pathways. Um, some simple organisms will make alcohol, so they'll eat sugar, and then they'll release that alcohol out into their environment, um, and they release CO2. So that's for like a simple yeast. Um, thankfully for you, when you run out of oxygen, you don't start releasing alcohol, because that would be pretty bad for your body. Um, you release a thing called lactic acid. Um, so lactic acid is kind of irritating for your muscles. Um, if you've ever worked out really hard and then been sore the next day, it's because of the lactic acid that pools in your muscles. And the best thing to do if you're sore is to work out again, because um, that's going to move the lactic acid out of your muscles. Um, so in a simple thing like yeast, so yeast, uh, if you've ever been around your mom or dad when they're cooking, yeast is used to make pizza dough, used to make bread. Um, it's also what uh, somebody would use to make um, beer. It, the yeast eats sugars and then it poops out alcohol. Um, and you can harvest that alcohol if you were making beer. Or um, you can use the releasing of CO2 in bread or pizza dough to get that nice fluffy crust. And then um, in your body, you're going to be releasing lactic acid. And again, that's so you don't release something toxic like alcohol within your body. Um, so you, you would, uh, if you did that, you'd be getting energy, but then you would, uh, have that toxic thing in your body. Um, okay. So those are the three main things. So basically what I want to get you to get out of these slides, I, I want you to have written out the balanced equation. Um, and I want you to know what it uses and what it makes and I want you to know where it happens. And this is just kind of the basic introduction of these three processes. We're going to watch some videos and do some labs and kind of go into depth with each one of them to um, kind of help you understand and really break into each one. So um, that's it for this video. Good luck and see you next class.